Hello everyone and welcome back to another part of this series. So if you like this kind of series or episodes, uh, please subscribe and give a like and comment down below what we'd like to see next. And let's just get right into it. I never want to stop learning and this is why I'm using Skillshare. Skillshare provides over 22,000 lessons in multiple different subjects. Right now I'm taking the time to learn more on design and also social media as I've never been good with any of that. If Skillshare is something for you, I'll see you using the link in the description to get two months of free use. When signing up, you are prompted to pay and after two months. But if you don't want to do that, you can also always use the concept of subscription and not pay anything. So don't wait, try it out now. The link is in the description and let's get started. So just to get this going fast, we can see that we have our user block and update name. And this is actually a stream or async that we add a value to. So if we would go to our user block, uh, this is the class that we're using. So if you haven't seen this, you can see that in the last uh, part of this series. But just to make this quick, we are going to actually remove this stream controller. So the reason we're going to use these two stream controllers is because if we want to have a stream and we only have one value, for example, user, we don't actually need other streams for that. So I would, for example, for my use cases, I would use stream controllers for uh, items that or objects that doesn't correlate to each other or that I want to listen to that object specifically somewhere else. So for this example, we are pushing out a user and we have the name here. We can remove this to these two stream controllers. And for that, we can remove the listeners and also the dispose. Now these two methods right here are private and we are going to make this public. And that should be working fine. So another thing that I usually do, and I will just show this also, is that instead of using then and catch later, uh, we're just going to create another method for this called init. And I use a async function. So that way I can use the get user function with a wait keyword. Like that. So right now I can just take the in user and put that there. This way I just clean up the code a bit more. So we have the constructor. We have the init and then we have the dispose and then our methods. You can order this however you like. Um, this is just an example of ordering it. So if we would save this now, we will get some errors. That's because we don't actually use the method that we want. So if we take this new name variable, which contains the name that we pass in in this text widget, we call the update name and then just pass that variable in. So right now it should be working again. So if we type in a name and then press the button, uh, the name should be updated. So another thing we can actually do. So because we have set the stream builder to a type of user, we can actually remove some code here. So if we check this builder, we can see that it has a build context and a async snapshot user. So it already knows the two types that we are going to use in this builder. So just to remove some boilerplate code, we can remove the types. Which will just make the code a bit more clean. We can do the same up here. Like that. So what I also noticed right now actually is that we can see that we have two stream builders and this doesn't make that much sense actually. We're going to do another thing. We're going to actually wrap this column inside the stream builder instead. So we can instead have only one stream builder be notified when that up or the data is updated. So if we go to the column, we can actually take all of this code right here. So let's take the column and cut this out. 
and for the child of the center doesn't really matter we can actually take it at the top also let's take the center widget cut this out and make a stream builder and we take the builder which takes a context and snapshot So inside this, we're going to return all of the code we just did. We're going to have a initial data, which will be the one that we have used before. And we're also going to listen to the stream. So this way we can actually remove a couple of things. We can remove this stream builder and this stream builder. So let's take the text right here. And let's just, yeah, we can remove this one. And we should also be able to remove this one or change place this with this one. Like that. So there we have it working again. So what you also can do is, as we have initial data, this won't be a problem. But if you don't have the opportunity or uh, that you don't want to actually have initial data we can wrap this code inside here with a couple of if statements so I will not use them right here but I will show them you so you can see them we have in the snapshot we have some different properties so we can have a have or has data and this will be able to we will run this code if we have data from the snapshot and the data would be the actual data that we want. We have a have error or has error. And with this, we can see that if we have an error in the stream and that can be added with stream controller dot add error. And we can also check the connection state. So for example, I can have the has data here. And this will just be an example. So return. So if we re remove the initial data right here. And we can restart the application. We should see that we already, let's see what we have in the console. Yeah, okay, it's just because the, the emulator was a bit fast for the application to actually see. So I just changed the delay to three seconds for getting the user. And we can see that, uh, let's add a linear progress indicator instead. So we can see that if we have data, we're going to display this. And if we don't have any data, we're going to display a linear progress indicator. So if I would hot restart this now, we can see that we have the indicator that is loading. And when we have the data, we display the page. So this is a pretty normal use case. And you could also have a, if we have error, we can display the error message. But we'll not go too much into that for now. So that will be all for this video and I hope you like it. If you did, please let me know by liking and subscribing and also comment down below what you would like to see next. Uh, I have some plans on doing RX Start in the future. I just need to be a bit more comfortable before uh, making a tutorial for that. Uh, but thanks everyone and I hope you are doing great and I will see you in the next video. Bye.